Council Member President Pro Tem, would you please leave us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council is excited to have back uh, an old friend, someone who has prayed for this council for a long time, the good times and tough times, Monsignor Cody, lead us in prayer. Monsignor, you're still, you're still, there we go. Okay, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, good and gracious God, as members of our city council meet this evening, we ask blessing upon them. These days of continued sickness with COVID-19, we humbly ask your healing and your presence. Especially we pray for our nation in this time of transition. And President-elect Biden, as they prepare for that change in administration. In these times of political division and hostility, we ask for your wisdom and healing grace of reconciliation. Help us to be hopeful in the face of such difficulties and help us to grow together in mutual respect and generous tolerance and cooperation to seek the common good of all. Be with our council tonight and grant all of us your precious gift of peace and unity as we seek to do your will, work together for the common good of all. Amen. There we go. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Cody. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Can I get, get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So, second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Are there any resolutions by members of council, starting with President Pro Tem? None from me, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mitch Brown. Thank you, Council President. I, I don't have any resolution this evening, but I would like to make an announcement. With Veterans Day approaching, I'd like to take a moment to recognize all those who served our country and upheld our values. As we live through this time of division and disruption, my message to you is one of gratitude and hope. This is hope grounded in the fact that our institutions while facing new challenges remain strong and the cornerstone of our democracy. This would be, not be possible without the sacrifices made by the men and women of our armed forces. Thank you for your dedication to this country I would be remiss if I did not thank you for your leadership in our communities as the pandemic continues to impact the lives of Americans all across the country, the service of active duty military to deliver supplies, construct temporary hospitals, and distribute food has made the world a difference to those struggling. While this Veterans Day may look different, please know that the gratitude and respect for your service is top of the mind for those in your communities and beyond. Just a statement, Council President, thank you. Thank you for making sure that we're focused on, on those who have served and protected our country. Council Member Dorans. Thank you, Council President. No resolutions tonight, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, want to remind those watching that the Public Utilities Committee will be holding our annual public hearing to learn more about the proposed 2021 utility rate adjustments. Uh, representatives from the Department of Public Utilities will be on hand to explain the proposed adjustments, how they relate to previous years, uh, assistance for our seniors and low-income customers affected by the COVID-19 pandemic as well. Uh, the hearing will take place virtually tomorrow at 5 p.m. You can watch it here on Council's Facebook page. If you'd like to participate or offer testimony, please email my legislative aide, Kevin McCain, at kbmmccain, m-c-c-a-i-n, at columbus.gov for proper links uh, to join us tomorrow. I'd also just want to quickly thank all of my council colleagues, in addition to 
uh, directors Aaron Gibbons, Matt Erickson, and certainly Kevin McCain and Hannah Miller from my staff, as well as the staff uh, all across council for their work on the Boat Safe Columbus initiative. Uh, we saw record turnout this past week by mail, early voting, and at the polls, even in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, so thank you to everyone in our community that made a plan to vote and voted safely this year. And just want to say thank you to all of my council colleagues for helping to push that message for many weeks out in our community to make sure that everyone could have their voices heard on election day. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Council President. Thank you for your leadership, Councilmember Dorans, and certainly to, to those uh, team members who, who helped you lead that. We greatly appreciate that. Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council President Pardon. No resolutions, but one brief announcement. Uh, the applications for the 2021 Columbus Youth Council are now live. The Columbus Youth Council is a five-month program in which high school juniors and seniors from Columbus City Schools will have the opportunity to immerse themselves in city government and learn how they can become stewards in their own community. This year's application period will close on December 11th. For more information or any questions, please reach out to my office. Anissa Levin can be reached at A-A-L-I-B-A-N at Columbus.gov or Tynesha Harden at T-Y-H-A-R-D-E-N at Columbus.gov. That is all I have, Council President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Ramey. Thank you so much, Council President Harden. I have two resolutions this evening. First, I have ordinance number uh, 0164 X 2020 to honor, recognize, and celebrate Miss Queen Brooks on being named the 2020 Raymond J. Hanley Award recipient by the Greater Columbus Arts Council. The, this annual award from the Raymond J. Hanley Fund at the Columbus Foundation is given to an artist who has demonstrated a high level of achievement while working at least five years in the arts in any discipline. The award money of $15,000 is given without restriction so that the artist can use it to further his or her career as needed. Visual artist Queen Brooks was born in Columbus, Ohio, and as a graduate of East High School, she began her art career working as an arts and crafts instructor. Miss Brooks then went back to Ohio, excuse me, went back to school and graduated from the Ohio State University, earning her Bachelor of Fine Arts and Master of Fine Arts degrees. And Queen Brooks is an established abstract artists known for telling stories by using lines, curves, bright colors, and decorative items. Her, her work is praised for its vibrant colors and sophisticated sense of pattern. After working for CODA, she apprenticed under Columbus photographer Kojo Kamau and began working in at the J. Ashbourne Jr. Youth Center as an arts and crafts instructor. Ms. Brooks has taught at Otterbein University and Ohio Dominican University and has long served as a mentor to Colum local Columbus artists of all ages. Her work has appeared in Essence, an international review of African-American art, and been exhibited at the Columbus Museum of Art, King Arts Complex, Ohio Dominican, and Otterbein Universities, and other collections across the U.S. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus to honor, recognize, and ce celebrate Miss Queen Brooks for being named the 2020 Raymond J. Hanley Award recipient by the Greater Columbus Arts Council. Um, I, I was excited. Uh, I am honored to serve on the Greater Columbus Arts Council Board along with my colleague Priscilla Tyson. And, you know, when we saw this award uh, being given out, um, we, we I, I think we're all very uh, joyful in uh, seeing that. And so it's, it is my pleasure to bring forth this resolution. Um, this evening, we have uh, Tom Katzemeyer, the president and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council, here to share a few words. And so, uh, Tom, uh, I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Council Member Ramey. I'd like to add just a few things to this. Uh, first of all, Queen Brooks is the 12th recipient of this award. Again, it's paid for uh, from a permanent endowment that we have at the Columbus Foundation from the proceeds of Ray Hanley's estate. I think it's particularly meaningful for Queen because she knew Ray very well and uh, her mentor, Kojo, received the award in 2012. So I think it adds, adds extra meaning. Last year, you will recall, we gave the award to Bobby Floyd, who I know that you all know. So it's a particular honor for a queen to receive this. 
she is incredibly grateful. She's one of the most humble people that you will ever meet. Uh, she is East High School's finest. Uh, she also has a BFA and MFA from Ohio State University. And as Council Member Remy mentioned, she's been featured in magazines and has received uh, numerous awards uh, from all over the world. It's, so it's a pleasure for her to be, for us to select her for this. And just one last thing that, you know, I asked her what she's been up to. Of course, she's actively working here in Columbus. She has just finished a mural at Parsons and Reeb, and it's about hope. The mural is about hope, and I think that's very appropriate given everything that's going on. And it's featured at the All People Arts Galleries, which just opened uh, in October. So if you get a chance to get down there and check it out, it's at Reeb and Parsons on the uh, near south side there. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Council Member Remy. I can't hear you. Council Member Remy, you're on mute. But uh, this is the first time I've done it from home, so. Uh, <laughs> I said, I'm sure that uh, Council Member Tyson might have a few words she'd like to say. So I'll turn the floor over to her for a moment. Thank you, Council Member Remy. I am just elated um, that Queen Brooks has received this award. I have certainly known Queen a very, very, very long time and just um, have admired her work from afar, but also in my own home. Mm -hmm. And I am a collector of her work. But I just want to say that her commitment to this community is um, I'm so glad we're honoring her because of her commitment, not only to the arts, but to especially young people in our community. She's always reached out and um, worked with young people to allow them to be able to um, utilize their skills to be able to produce art. So I am, it's just such an honor and a privilege for her to get this award. I'm thankful for her to be a part of this community and congratulations, Queen. God bless. Do any of my other colleagues have any uh, comments they'd like to make before I turn the floor over to Queen? Ms. Brooks, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm so appreciative. I'm so humbled. I'm still trying to get this wrapped around my brain in terms of me being the recipient. I, I'm certainly appreciative. I I did not even know this award existed. Um, and I did know Ray, and I'm I'm just very happy. And now I'm just asking for uh, wisdom to use these funds wisely. And uh, I'm still out here trying to do what God has given me to do, and to share with others, both young and old, whomsoever. Um, again, I'm I'm just very grateful, and I thank you. Um, for the recommendation, the commendation, I, I'm, thanks. That's all I can say is thank you very much. Well, Ms. Brooks, thank you and congratulations for winning the award. We're, we're happy you joined us this evening. Um, seeing no other questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Adopted. Thank you so much. Again, I now I have an ordinance that uh, comes uh, with special recognition to uh, uh, someone that served our great city for quite some time and, and made a huge impact within the community. Um, it's ordinance number 0165X 2020 to honor, recognize and celebrate Ms. Sherry Palmer and her retirement from the city of Columbus. Sherry Palmer began her career with the City of Columbus on March 20, 2006 in the Department of Public Service when she became the Keep Columbus Beautiful Manager. She held this position until her, her retirement on October 22, 2020, and Sherry Palmer keeps views Keep Columbus Beautiful as a mission and a passion rather than just a job. She has an exceptional work ethic and seemingly limitless energy. Her drive is reinforced by incredible creativity and standard for high quality results that reflect well on the city, the mayor, and the Department of Public Service. And Keep Columbus Beautiful plays an important role, an important role in bringing residents, businesses, and community leaders throughout our neighborhoods together for the common goal of keeping our neighborhoods clean and welcoming, which has increased the sense of community pride within the city of Columbus. 
And Sherry Palmer sets a great example for the thousands of volunteers who keep Columbus beautiful, works with each year. Uh, Sherry effectively uses a personal one-on-one -on -one approach to spread her positive attitude and passion she, she brings to her work and the mission of Keep Columbus Beautiful. And the city of Columbus is truly grateful for the efforts of Sherry Palmer, Palmer and her ability to build relationships and bring the community together in keeping Columbus beautiful. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus to honor, recognize, and celebrate Ms. Sherry Palmer and her retirement from the City of Columbus on Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. I uh, have had the pleasure and honor of working with um, Sherry for the last three years and really before that as a community leader in, in, in the Northland area. And so I know how many people across the city um, you know, relied on her and her mission um, many, many years, 10 years to keep keep or kick butt Columbus. Uh, she was instrumental in that organization. And certainly uh, for all of her contributions, she's made for us uh, in the city of Columbus to to make sure our streets look much better um, than, than they ever have. So I am very honored to uh, introduce um, former Columbus mayor, uh, Michael B. Coleman, uh, to say a few words uh, for, for Sherry. Michael Coleman, Mayor Coleman, the floor is yours. Got to work out that mute button. There it is. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 Mr. President of Council, members of Council, Council Member Remy, uh, and others, I take great pleasure in acknowledging Sherry Palmer as well for all her years of work at the City of Columbus with Keep Columbus Beautiful. Uh, and, you know, She's a wonderful person on top of it, but she did, in fact, keep Columbus beautiful and clean. When folks come to the city of Columbus from other cities, uh, other big cities and medium-sized cities, they come to Columbus, they all, always say how clean the city is. That's the first thing they say. And uh, when they talk about how clean and beautiful we are, the first thing I think about is Sherry Palmer and how hard she's worked to keep our city clean. Uh, one of my favorite events was Kick Butt Columbus. Uh, not just because of the name, a very aggressive name, but the fact that city employees came uh, together and spread out all over the community to clean up our city uh, over a course of a weekend. And uh, it was a way for neighborhood leaders to come together a way for city employees to come together and to keep us clean at the, in the same process. I always say that uh, how we look on the outside sets the pace for how we feel on the inside. And uh, Sherry's done such a great job at ensuring that we look good on the outside and it sets the pace of how we feel on the inside. So thank you, Sherry, for all your work. and. Uh, uh, and and look forward to a great retirement. Thank you, Mayor Coleman. I appreciate that. I, I know Sherry does as well. It's it's an absolute honor to recognize your contributions, Sherry, to our great city. We're so thankful to have you this evening. And so uh, with that, I'll turn the floor over to you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Oh my goodness, well, I have tears right now. Um, President Hardin and Council Member Remy and my dearest Mayor Coleman, I'm so honored. Um, thank you for your kind words. I love this city, uh, working on behalf of the people was an amazing 15 years. I met and made so many friends and the passion of the Columbus neighborhoods is just outstanding. And our businesses and our churches, those are the people that we should be thanking because they are the ones who care and create a most beautiful, beautiful city. 
And I thank each and every one of you because I know I've bugged you in some way over the many years asking for your support and your guidance. And it is my honor um, to live in this city and to have worked on behalf of its people. Thank you so much. Well, of course, work never ends. And so hopefully we'll be able to see you out there as we uh, continue to work towards a cleaner Columbus and uh, keep the great work that you've, been, that you've established with Keep Columbus Beautiful going. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any uh, comments they'd like to make this evening? President Pro Tem Brown. Um, thank you, Council Member Remy. Congratulations, Sherry, on your retirement. I just want to um, say what a joy it was working with you, um, more so while I was environment chair uh, before Council Member Remy joined Council, um, and, and just seeing your passion for our city. And I, I could tell that just every day you felt it. Um, and you channel that towards making us all better. I, I really think um, Mayor Coleman's words were so well put um, about our outsides reflecting our insides. And fortunately you had, um, I think a community that really supported your efforts um, and Kick Buck Columbus is that sort of marquee event um, of the year, but it wasn't uh, the entirety of what Keep Columbus Beautiful did. And I know you worked um, 365 days a year to uh, really carry out the mission all year long. So, um, and on top of all of that, you're just a joy to be around. Um, so thank you, Sherry, uh, for your passion and commitment and um, happy demeanor <laughs> in, in doing the work and congratulations. Thank you, President Pro Tem Brown. Uh, anyone else of my colleagues? Director Gallagher, Gall Gall excuse me, Direct Director Gallagher, would you like to say something? I'll, and I'll turn it over to Council Member. Yes. Thank you, Council Member Remy. Um, Sherry, it's great to see you this evening in your beautiful smiling face. You will be missed in the department. And like so many people have already said, you just had such a passion and boundless joy. And you brought smiles to people's face and you will definitely be missed. Um, you already have been missed. We just all wish you well in the department. And I say that from all of us. So thank you so, so much and good, good luck. Thanks, Council Member Tyson. Thank you, Chairman Remy. Um, Sherry, just, I wanna wish you really well in your retirement. You certainly have been a joy to work with, but also more importantly, you've just been a joy just for Columbus as everyone's already stated, just your energy and enthusiasm for our community and for the work that you were responsible for. You did an amazing job. So I wish you well as you move forward um, with the rest of your amazing life. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Tyson. If there are no, uh, Rob, you, you, you chiming in? All right, Council Member Dorrance. <laughs> I just want to say a congratulations to Sherry on your, your well-deserved retirement. I just remember, I think, going to one of my first events that you would organize and you get there on an early Saturday morning. And uh, it's very easy for people to be you know, looking for the coffee and a little bit grumpy that early. And because of your personality and your love of what you did, uh, it was just contagious of everyone wanting to get out there and, you know, clean up our city. And that uh, your attitude changed that for everyone who, who wanted to do that work. So. Uh, thank you for your service to the city and, and certainly a uh, blessing in retirement. Thanks, Council Member Dorrance. Anyone else? All right, seeing no one else, I move for adoption. Clerk, Second. please. Second. Clerk, please call the row. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Congratulations, Ms. Sherry, uh, and thank you for your service uh, to this city. Well learned <laughs> retirement. Thank you, Sherry. That's all I have this evening. Thanks, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Remy. Council Member Tyson. Yes, I don't have any solutions this evening, but I do have an announcement. And it is um, Commission on Black Girls will host a virtual summit. What's going across? Is there a virtual summit on Wednesday, November the 18th? And with the theme Crown to Succeed. Uh, the B Black Girls Soar Virtual Summit provides a safe space, a digital convening of African-American girls ages 11 to 22 years.
others, to learn, reflect, and empower themselves with, and others. The summit also seeks to help Black girls as they are dealing with the challenges of COVID-19. It is designed to provide important life skills and tangible best practices in the areas of leadership, critical thinking, professional development, financial literacy, self-care, self-love, health and wellness, and more. The summit will feature national, regional, and local thought leaders, speakers across a variety of general sessions and specialized workshops. Um, again, this is part of our Black Girl Soar campaign. Initially, you know, we had in August, they had the back to school drive through rally, and now we're at, um, we now will be having our virtual Crown to Succeed conference. There are already we have some confirmations of some of our some, some of our national leaders. We will have Kier Share, um, who's a musical artist. We'll have Taylor Hill, a former WBNA um, player. She also attended the Ohio State University. Malika James, who is from Columbus, Ohio, and she is a celebrity makeup artist. Um, we will have locally um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hicks, Shari Hicks Graham will be a panelist, and we just have lots of people that will be engaged, as well as our 17 advisory girl council will also be partaking in the um, the summit. And if you, um, we also are going to have, if you are interested in nominating a uh, a girl who has um, done some amazing work within the city of Columbus, whether they do through academics or through arts through through sports or community service you can also nominate a, a young lady from on um, um for to get to become a black girl sore 2020. we also will have a, a pitch contest so if you have a business you will be able to be mentored as well as receive some um, financial assistance from um, pmm powered by pmm and uh, so we're just really looking forward to our girls registering. Our goal is to have 500 girls. To register online, you can go to www.blackgirlssore.com. Blackgirlssore.com. So looking forward to this conference next week on the 18th of uh, 18th of November. And additionally, I just want to remind um, our viewing audience that we will have flu shots again a hot, a, from Columbus Public Health. They are being um, drive-through flu shots at the Ohio Expo Center and State Fair and State Fair Celeste Center at 717 East 17th Avenue. It's Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. And you can also receive a COVID, a free COVID-19 um, shot. Oh, not shot test as well. And that's all of my announcements. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Tyson. Um, just a few uh, uh, points that I'd like to, to make. One, uh, City Council is uh, in conjunction with St. Stephen's is hosting a, a turkey giveaway in, prepare, in preparation for Thanksgiving. We plan to hand out a, a thousand turkeys on November 21st from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, it will be at St. Stephen's Community House and we're asking folks to register at bit.ly slash council turkey giveaway. We wanna encourage folks as we uh, move into our Thanksgiving season, um, and this goes into my, my next point, um, that COVID is still here. And so we are encouraging folks to have smaller gatherings uh, in, in your uh, immediate family, and we want to make sure that that you're able to have a turkey at your with your immediate family uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, because uh, there have been eight over 489 deaths in Columbus from COVID. Um, there have been uh, on November 7th, there were 464 cases, um, and that's the highest number since we started testing. Um, here in Columbus, 464 new cases. That is also why, uh, as you can see, uh, I, I've been, since we came back from break or came back from uh, uh, from our the first COVID spike, um, uh, hosting council from council chambers, we have made a decision because of this current surge to uh, model what we are saying. Uh, and, and we're gonna be council going back to a fully virtual um, stance in terms of meetings and hearings um, for the foreseeable future. 
Uh, and so we would just encourage folks to continue to uh, be vigilant. We continue to do our part uh, now to, to flatten the curve once again. Uh, we know what we have to do, keep a mask on, keep our social distance, uh, continue to clean our hands. Um, with that, are there any uh, requests by members of council for the removal of ordinance or resolution from the consent portion of the agenda? Agenda. Seeing none, we now have a motion to waive the reading of titles of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda. Uh, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, present, Hart. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda? Recreation Parks Committee Ordinance 2337-2020. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2366, 2375, 2379, 2380, 2405, 24, 28, 2020. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinance 2414-2020. Economic Development Committee Ordinance 2038-2020. Environment Committee Ordinance 2391-2020. Rules and Reference Committee Ordinances 2418-2419-2420-2020 and Zoning Committee Ordinance 1685-2020. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent actions for the clerk not read those into the record. Finance Committee Ordinances 2297, 2371, 2386, 2400, 2413, 2442, 2444, 2450, 2456, and 2462 2020. Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinance 2397 2020. Public Safety Committee Ordinance 2407 2467 2020. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2311, 2313, 2343. 2474-2020, Technology Committee, Ordinance 2347, 2359, 2369, 2403, and 2461-2020, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 2248, 2344, 2363, 2382, 2384, 2402, 2422, 2426, 2432, 2443, 2449, 2459, 2470, 2486, 2489 2020. Housing Committee Ordinance 2430 2020. Criminal Justice and Judici Judiciary Committee Ordinance 2143 and 2406 2020. Economic Development Committee Resolution 155 X 2020 and Ordinances 2481 and 2532 2020. Administration Committee Ordinance 2463 and 2540-2020, Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 2524 and 2555-2020. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, we don't have any speakers on the consent portion of the agenda. Are there any questions or comments on this portion uh, from my colleagues? Seeing none, may I have a motion of approval of these items as needed as consent uh, by voice? So moved. moved. Second, please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Favor? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Tyson? Yes, with the exception of 2449-2020, on which I am abstaining. President Hart. Yes, consent portion cares. We will now proceed with the reading of 30-day entabled emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. The committee is chaired by President Pro Tem. President Pro Tem, the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much, Council President. Tonight in um, uh, my committees in finance, we are starting with resolution 0162X-2020 to accept the capital improvements program 2020 to 2025 as described herein 
as the primary guide for future capital improvements, budgets, ordinances, and to declare an emergency. Many capital projects require more than a single year to plan and construct. Due to that extended time frame of many projects, the Capital Improvements Program, or CIP, provides guidance for planned capital investments over the next five years. The CIP also reflects the remaining priorities from the voted bond packages in 2013, 2016, and 2019. Tonight, we will be tabling the CIP to be considered for passage on November 16th, along with the 2020 capital improvement budget. Um, I would like to, uh, first, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to table for one week. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Table. Uh, thank you. I'm going to go a little bit out of order and, and move on to the, the CI, uh, CIB ordinance and then go back to um, uh, uh, 2457. Uh, ordinance 2521 2020 to adopt a capital improvements budget for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2020, or until such a time as new capital improvements budget is adopted, uh, establishing a project budget for capital improvements requiring legislative authorization in 2020, and to repeal mm -hmm. ordinance number 1326 2019 as amended and to declare an emergency. Like the CIP tonight, we are tabling the CIB for one week. Earlier today, we held a public hearing to review the budget proposed by Mayor Ginther last week. Um, over the course of the next week, we will receive public comment on the budget before final consideration on November 16th. I encourage residents to reach out directly to um, myself um, or my office. I am, my email is ecbrown at columbus.gov um, and to continue to provide input. We really appreciate um, the time taken by council members and the directors today to hold uh, a, a lengthy and substantive hearing. And we really value the feedback of residents on an annual basis when we put together our CIB. Earlier this year, um, in the before times, uh, before COVID, um, as I refer to them, we reached out to area commissions and civic associations and asked for capital priorities in their areas, um, assuming we'd be a sort of under a normal operating procedure. Uh, this, at that time, we thought we were, and this local input is really crucial. Um, from repaving streets to installing sidewalks um, to resident feedback on recreation and parks, parks, facilities, and more. These all have a direct impact on quality of life in our neighborhoods. No one knows more about their neighborhoods than the people who live there. Um, I, I'm grateful to the area commissions and civic associations and everyone who volunteers their time to serve on them. Your work um, is really valuable to processes like these and just to the ongoing nature of the work the city does. Thank you to the departments and their staff as well. Although the 2020 capital improvement budget will receive final consideration next week, um, the process is ongoing. As I mentioned for the CIP, many of these projects take time to plan and construct, and the process for prioritizing these investments continues throughout the year and over multiple years. My goal as finance chair is to make these investments open and accessible. These projects are some of the most direct ways we make investments in our neighborhoods. Are there any questions um, or comments from my colleagues before I move to table? Seeing none, I move to table for one week. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, favor, Reed, ah. Tyson, President Mark. Table. Great, thank you. Um, next, I'd like to go back to Ordinance 2457-2020 to appropriate funding for the Starling Street parking garage to authorize the expenditure of $30,700,000 from the parking garages fund and to declare an emergency. As part of the ongoing work to redevelop the Scioto Peninsula and to support that redevelopment, the city has engaged Capital South to construct a parking garage, which will be financed and owned by the city. 
City Council previously authorized the issuance of limited tax bond um, anticipation notes to finance the construction of the garage. This garage will contain approximately 1400 spaces to support uh, redevelopment and the the operation of parking garages in the city's uh, past and present has continu consistently, excuse me, generated revenue for the city. Due to this, we often pay down the debt service for their construction on an accelerated schedule. Strong revenue, savings through accelerated debt payments and supporting the parking needs of new development have made the construction of parking garages like this a strong investment for the city. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, hearing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, favor Remy Tyson, President Hart. Pass. Uh, Council President, may I move to Recreation and Parks? Please. Tonight in Recreation and Parks, we have Ordinance 2356-2020 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into contract with Harold's LLC for the purchase of golf course pesticides for the Recreation and Parks Department to waive the formal competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code um, 329 to authorize the expenditure of $190,256 and two, $190, for the purchase of the golf turf pesticides from the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. This purchase is for use at the city's six golf courses. The use of these pesticides allows the courses to be maintained at a level that is comparable to the standards at other courses in the area. Maintaining course conditions is an important part of the ongoing operations uh, and maintaining revenue for the city's golf courses. The golf division changed its pesticide application program in 2017 and has been able to reduce the amount of product used while still maintaining course conditions. Additionally, I appreciate the Rec and Parks Department's ongoing commitment to being responsible environmental stewards through the integrated pest management policy that was adopted last year. I will continue to support the ongoing efforts within the department to reduce the use of chemicals wherever possible. Uh, today, we, I am proposing to waive competitive bidding and considering emergency action in order to take advantage of substantial discounts available through Syngenta's fall purchasing program, which has an application deadline of December 7th. Are there questions or comments from my colleagues? Uh, seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you, President Harden. And I have one final ordinance in education. May I move to that committee? Please. We have ordinance 2404-2020 to authorize the director of the Department of Education to modify a contract with the Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services to increase the number of child care providers to whom they could provide CARES Act funding by making the grant available to all Franklin County providers that serve disadvantaged children and to declare an emergency. In July, Council allocated $6.2 million in CARES Act funds to support child care providers serving Columbus families. With this contract modification, we are expanding the number of providers who are eligible to accept these funds. Most providers serving low-income children survive on state child care subsidies and struggle to meet the bottom line expenses of operating a center. These are, that's in normal times. And these difficulties have only been compounded by new child to teacher ratios and maximum class sizes required as we continue to deal with the COVID-19 health crisis. Our childcare system is vital infrastructure that supports families who need a safe place for their children to learn and grow while they are at work. We will continue doing everything we can to support this system as our local providers weather the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Ensuring access to childcare for all families is one of the most important investments we can make 
for the health of families and our economy now and into the future. Although we treat the childcare system like the private market, like a luxury, like an option, uh, it truly is public infrastructure. We must continue to find ways to do more to support it as such if we are going to build a successful city into the future. Through this ordinance, we're continuing our focus on doing more to support childcare in Columbus as the essential infrastructure that it is. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, uh, I move for passage. Second. Please call for, please call the row. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. And that is all I have in my committees. Thank you, President Patam. Next committee we have before council this evening is the Public Utilities Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Dorrance. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. In the Public Utilities Committee tonight, we have ordinance number 2304-2020 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter in a construction contract with Groundworks OBA LLC for the roof redirection Clintonville 1 Bethlehem Glencoe Area 2 project to authorize the appropriation transfer of $1,755,435.32 from the Sanitary Sewer Reserve Fund to the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund to authorize the appropriation of expenditure of $1,755,435.32 from the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund to authorize expenditure of up to $2,000 for prevailing wage services within the Sanitary General Obligation Voted Bond Fund and to authorize an amendment to the 2019 Capital Improvement Budget. Uh, this project consists of replacing and redirecting spout, downspout drain tiles uh, from up to 493 homes in the Clintonville 1 blueprint area, which will help mitigate water and basement events and sanitary sewer overflows in this area. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll in ordinance uh, 2259. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think I had the wrong ordinance number there. Thank you for the assist, Council President. Um, next I have, let me make sure. Okay, next we have ordinance number 2318-2020 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter in a construction contract with Underground Utilities, Inc., for the Thomas Lane Area Water Line Improvements Phase Two project, the amount of up to two million four hundred seventy two thousand sixty four dollars and forty three cents, to authorize the appropriation and transfer of two million three hundred fifty seven two million three hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred seventy eight dollars and sixty three cents from the Water uh, Water System Reserve Fund to the Water Supply Revolving Lo Loan Account Fund, to authorize the appropriation of expenditure of two million three hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred seventy eight dollars and sixty three cents within the Water Supply Revolving Loan Account Fund to authorize expansion of up to $2,000 within the Water General Obligations Voted Bond Fund for preventing wage services for the Division of Water to authorize expansion of up to $114,485.80 from the Streets and Highways uh, Bond Fund for the Department of Public Service and to authorize amendment of the 2019 Capital Improvements Budget. Uh, the goal of this project is replace or rehabilitate the existing six and eight inch water lines that have high break frequency. Replacement of these water lines will improve water services, decrease burden on water maintenance operations, and reduce water loss. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. May I move on to the Technologies Committee? Please. Thank you. Tonight in the Technology Committees, we have Ordinance Number 2527-2020 to authorize the Director of the Department of Technology to enter into a Master Agreement slash Memorandum of Understanding with the Columbus Partnership to enable the reimbursement of federal CARES Act funding so that the Columbus Partnership can acquire broadband products and services in support of remote learning for K-12 students in Columbus City Schools to authorize the expenditure of $500,000 in Federal CARES Act funding for the above described purpose and to declare an emergency. 
This is being done as part of the city's efforts to provide remote friendly connectivity for Columbus K-12 students. As we all know, the COVID-19 pan pandemic rapidly changed and reinforced the need to move to a virtual and blended learning approach in public education. Public schools across Ohio and the nation continue to operate in a remote education or hybrid learning models, which require robust residential broadband connectivity to ensure students' access to learning. With the ongoing ever-changing nature of COVID-19 locally, the need for various aspects of remote and blended learning for our students here in Columbus continues. As part of our community's broadband outreach in order to provide resident connectivity uh, for K-12 households, the city and the Columbus Partnership are exploring alternative residential broadband connectivity technologies, which may provide these households with low cost, affordable broadband options, including providing internet equipment and services to household, fiber and network co connectivity products and project management and digital literacy outreach. Uh, this is a important pilot program that I really think is gonna not only help folks here today that are dealing with these issues uh, in our community, but also lay the groundwork for potential uh, partnerships down the line uh, to bring low cost broadband to more folks in our community that may not be able to afford it. Uh, I'd like to pause and allow uh, the Department of Technology Director Sam Moore an opportunity to speak more to this project. I know, as I know, he and the department's very excited about moving forward. Director? Uh, good evening and thank you, President Hardin, President Pro Tem Brown, Chair Dorans, Member of Council. Uh, thank you for your consideration of this ordinance, which is for the city's community broadband pilots. And thank you also for your ongoing support of the city's efforts in closing the broadband gap for our community. Uh, as part of the city's broadband outreach efforts, we're requesting use of existing CARES Act funding allocated to the department in support of these two broadband pilots in partnership with the columbus partnership smart columbus and the columbus broadband task force the funding for these pilots will be used to purchase wireless equipment and services help desk support and digital literacy outreach for two columbus neighborhoods using leading edge wireless technology to provide residential internet connectivity for 200 k through 12 households the goal is to provide affordable, high capacity broadband to residents in the pilots beginning in early 2021 and in time to provide remote access for students throughout the remainder of the school year. As Chair Dorans indicated, the pilots will also be instrumental to informing the city's long term broadband outreach and will be options for the city to consider moving forward. The, this emergency legislation was needed due to CARES Act funding timelines, which require funds to be spent by the end of the year. Thanks for your consideration of this ordinance, and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do any of my council colleagues have any questions for Director Orth? Seeing none, I also just want to say thank you to Director Orth and the entire Department of Technology as the city continues to do more of its work remotely. Uh, they have worked tirelessly to make sure that our employees uh, whether that council or the mayor's office or any any part of the city that interacts with the public uh, is able to do their job and certainly the many many countless hours that they've put in to make sure that that can happen so uh, thank you director worth for your work and certainly your team for uh, making sure our, our residents can expect to continue to receive that the high quality uh, interaction between their governments and citizens and we wouldn't be able to do so without the, the department of technology filling that that vital role during this this uh, challenging time. Um, with that, since my colleagues do not have any questions or comments, uh, I'd like to um, move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That is all I have in my committees tonight. Thank you, sir. The next committee to come before council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. That committee is chaired by Council Member Faber. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have Ordinance 2122-2020 to authorize the Director of Public Service to modify an existing contract with IPS Group Incorporated by extending the existing contract term with the option of renewal terms and by increasing the authorized expenditure amount to provide parking meter equipment, annual meter management, components, and services for city's parking meter program, to waive the formal competitive bidding requirements of Columbus City Code, to authorize the transfer of appropriation within the parking meter operating fund, 
to authorize the expenditure of up to $600,000 from the parking meter operating fund and to declare an emergency. Director Gallagher, can you speak a little bit more about this ordinance, including the waiver of competitive bidding? Yes, good, good evening again, council members. Um, council member favor, several factors led us to uh, recommend extending the current agreement with IPS beyond the initial 10 year contract. First, COVID related budget constraints limited our parking services ability to pr procure a new meter system this year. Um, secondly, our parking services is taking strides, as you know, to move to an asset light approach with our on street parking management. Uh, through the implementation of multi-space meters in lieu of our single space meters and advancing mobile payment solutions for our customers. And finally, due to the changing nature of parking demand and parking technology, it would really be advantageous for us to wait a couple years to go to market for a new parking system. Um, to, I'm sorry, to go to a new, the, to go to market for a new parking technology to truly understand the long-term impacts that COVID is going to have on our transportation and parking system downtown. Ultimately, this ordinance will give our parking services the flexibility um, to manage our curb space over this next year or so while we continue to monitor the ever-changing um, system and, and see what we want to do in the next several years. So we appreciate your um, giving us that opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Gallagher. Are there any um, questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I would move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Pass. Thank you. That is all I have in my committee this week. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The next committee to come before council is the Economic Development Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember uh, Remy. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Council President Harden. I have two items in the Economic Development Committee this evening. The first is Ordinance 2349-2020 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into an Enterprise Zone Agreement with Middle, Middle West Service, excuse me, Middle West Spirits LLC for a tax abatement of 75% for a period of 10 consecutive years in consideration of a total proposed capital expenditure of approximately 6205000 The retention of 14 full-time jobs with an estimated annual payroll of $897,200 and the creation of 13 net new full-time permanent positions with an estimated annual payroll of approximately $668,000. Middle West Spirits is Ohio's award-winning craft distillery founded by in 2008 by Brady, Kanya, and Ryan Lang. The, the company has three operating locations in Columbus and produces small batch craft spirits, including its flagship OIO product lines and Bim and Petal Dry Gin. Middle West Spirits opened its distillery for commercial production and selling in June 2010. Recently, to help serve the community and combat the spread of COVID-19, in March 2020, Middle West Spirits created a recipe and sought necessary approvals to produce hand sanitizers that have been used and distributed throughout the community. Middle West Spirits is proposing to invest a total of six million two hundred five thousand, which includes approximately three million nine hundred twenty in acquisition costs, two million in real property improvements, and two hundred eighty-five thousand in machinery and equipment to develop a vacant industrial warehouse site for the purpose of relocating and expanding its office and warehouse operations. The uh, proposed location is a vacant lot. Park, uh, is a, is the property located at 1165 Allen Creek Drive, consisting of approximately 35,189 square feet. A vacant lot parcel at 1185 Allen Creek Drive, consisting of 0.890 acres, and two vacant warehouses located at 1195 Allen Creek, consisting of approximately 17,044 um, and 1221 Allen Creek. At, with 47,139 square feet. Middle West Spirits received notice from its current landlord, landowner stating their current lease on Star Avenue will be terminating early and the building is scheduled for demo demolition in March 2021. So they must vacate the premises. With this early lease termination, Middle West Spirits is using this opportunity to expand its office and warehouse operations. The Department of Development recommends a 75% 10-year enterprise zone tax abatement 
on real property improvements. The Columbus City School Board of Education has been advised of this project. And so tonight we have one of the, the owners, Ryan Lane here um, to share a few words. So I will turn the floor over to you, Ryan. Great. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Remy. Uh, Council President Hardin, Council uh, Columbus City Council members, uh, thank you for the consideration of the incentive support for Middle West Spirits proposed relocation and expansion project into Columbus. Um, we've been part of the Columbus community since 2008, as mentioned. Um, we're in the Wineland Park area. Um, we started investing in that area and have grown quite a bit over the last 12 years and, and moved into other locations like Milo Grogan. Uh, we continue to put as much money as we can back into the region and into our our, our people and our facilities. Uh, we're proud to be part of the fabric of the community um, and thankful that the community that we we live and work in uh, supports us so much and have, have done so over the last 12 years. Yeah, as, as mentioned, 2020 was a very rough year for, is a very rough year for businesses uh, across America. When the pandemic hit, uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, the ability to give back because we have the internal resources um, to help our first round responders and there's a need with our sanitation uh, PPE program, our sanitizer PPE program. We are able to use a lot of our equipment and, and make products quickly and get them out to the market and, and uh, try to uh, support as much as we can. We're happy to continue to do that, to help and contribute uh, where we can and we'll continue to do so if we are, are called upon again. Um, for our future uh, for Middle West, um, as mentioned, we um, are having a consolidation of our buildings that we're currently in. So we were in process to look for a new location anyway. Um, we ended up finding a nice property on Allen Creek. Uh, we made a decision to move and consolidate uh, several of our locations there, uh, not our current plant uh, in um, on Wineland Park near Fifth and High. Uh, we're moving uh, new offices and a processing center there, to Allen Creek Drive. Uh, we'll continue to invest as we have in the past in our community. Uh, with a new site development of a, of a showcase campus for our company over the next few years. We're excited about the new chapter for Middle West and, and hope to continue to, to make our city proud of one of its local businesses. Um, we value the partnerships and years of support that we've received from you, the city of, of Columbus Council, uh, One Columbus and Jobs Ohio over the years. Um, your support for this is very critical in our decision to move uh, forward with the project. Uh, uh, as a side note, I'd like to also thank Anthony Slappy, who's uh, helped us with this effort to explore the resources and solutions that we needed, and they were truly appreciated. Uh, thank you again for consideration of our incentive support to revive the facilities that we're hopefully moving into and to create a future showcase uh, operation for the company. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your commitment to the city of Columbus and certainly uh, do appreciate uh, your 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 fine products that you sell so uh <laughs> director stevens do you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share uh, thank you president hardin chair remy members of city council i just want to highlight the fact that by moving forward with this abatement we're going to be making a strategic investment to retain and grow one of our local columbus companies and um, it's tools like these that are resulting in continued investment and job growth uh, i appreciate ryan and his team's ongoing commitment to the city of Columbus. And I also uh, want to echo Ryan's um, compliments to Anthony Slappy on our, on our economic development team who's out there working with our local businesses in a challenging time trying to help meet their needs as they look to grow. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Director Stevens. Do any of my colleagues have any uh, questions or comments this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you very much. Next, I have ordinance 2451-2020 to dissolve the job creation tax credit agreement between the City of Columbus and Asina Retail Group, Inc., Lane Bryant, Inc., Lane Bryant Purchasing Corporation, Catherine Stores Corporation, and ASNA Plus Fashion, Inc., and to declare an emergency. The City of Columbus entered into a job creation tax agreement with Asina Retail Group. Effective September 26, 2013, Columbus City Council approved the agreement 
by ordinance number 1517 2013 adopted it on july 1st 2013 and granted a non-refundable tax credit in an amount of 60 percent of the new municipal income tax revenues generated by new employees at the project site for seven years commencing january 1st 2014 and for seven consecutive years thereafter in consideration of the company's total capital investment of approximately two hundred thousand and the creation of 15 full-time permanent positions Council also approved the, the authorization of the, by the Director of Development to enter into an a, amendment to the agreement on October 3rd, 2016, by Ordinance Number 2377, 2016, but that amendment was never executed. And so, as per Section 2, it, that ordinance did end up uh, becoming null and void. On September 17th, 2017, Ordinance 2320, excuse me, 2303, 2017, Council approved the authorization of the director of development to enter into an amended and restated job creation tax credit agreement with the organization with this amendment and restarted agreement the grantee committed to retain 274 full-time permanent jobs with a total annual payroll of approximately 24.7 million dollars increased their new hiring goal from 15 to 130 full-time positions with a commensurate uh, annual payroll of approximately 11.8 million and extended their lease term by another 10 years in a letter from the grantee dated September 23rd, 2020, the grantee advised the city that with this letter, we are voluntarily requesting termination of the job creation tax credit agreement and noted that additionally, they hereby waive the rights to you, to any unused tax credit certificates. This legislation is to dissolve that agreement between the city of Columbus and a Cena retail group. This legislation is presented as an emergency me measure in order for this dissolution to be legislated in the most expedient manner as possible so that this dissolution of the agreement can be reported to the necessary local and state agencies without further delay. Director Stevens, do you have any additional information you'd like to share on this? Uh, President Hardin, Chair Ramey, members of council, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments in regards to this particular piece of legislation? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Pass. Thank you. That is all I have this evening in my committees. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the final committee to come before council is the Health and Human Services Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. I have Ordinance 2399-2020. It is to authorize the Board of Health to modify by increasing an existing contract with Equitas Health to continue to provide a harm reduction program called Safe Point through March 31st of 2021 and to authorize the ex expenditure of $175,000 from, from the Health Special Revenue Fund and to declare um, an emergency. Harm reduction services provided by Equitas allow clients who are high risk and high risk of accidental overdose death to, to access the life-saving drug naloxone and to receive and to receive risk reduction counseling, referrals, referrals to alcohol and drug treatment, and overdose prevention education. To date, in 2020, Safe Point provided services to 3,309 individ individual clients and had a total of 8,249 visits. Clients who, who participate in the Safe Point program are provided access to many types of care that address both the active substance use disorder as well as other social determinants of health. Through September of 2020, Safe Point has provided 244 referrals for alcohol and drug treatment, 116 linkages to medical care, provided overdose prevention education to 3,711 clients and 80 referrals for behavioral or mental health care services. If you have any questions, you can contact Zach Holmes. He's the Harm Reduction Program Manager at 614-645-2750 or zbholmes at columbus.gov. Columbus and Holmes is H-O-L-M-E-S. If there are no questions or comments, uh, I move for passage. Second. 
Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have in my committee this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there any other business to come before council? Seeing none, may I have a motion for re to recess? To adjourn. Mm -hmm. I apologize. To adjourn. M motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Meeting is adjourned. We have two non agenda speakers, but I'm mine just.
45 will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, okay. President Hart. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents and three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side. And we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, anyone here um, who wishes to speak for or against any council variance, including staff, must be sworn in prior to giving testimony. We will do so prior to beginning the reading of each variance on the agenda. So let's start with the first uh, ordinance. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. Ordinance 2310-2020 is to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3355.03, C3 permitted uses, and 3361.02, CPD permitted uses of the Columbus C codes for the property located at 777 North 4th Street to permit ground floor residential uses in a mixed use development in the CPD commercial plan development district. The applicant is the Likens Company, care of Dave Perry agent. The proposed use is a ground floor residential use as use as part of a mixed use development. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Italian Village Commission's recommendation is also approval. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I first move to waive second reading. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Waive. Thank you. Now I'm, I would like to amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Amended. And lastly, I'm, I'd like to move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Okay. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2408 2020 is to rezone 6465 North Hamilton Road, being 1.27 acres located on the west side of Hamilton, North Hamilton Road. 215 feet south of Warner Road from CPD Commercial Plan Development District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is TH Midwest Incorporated in care of Christopher Reinhardt. The proposed use is a car wash. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Rocky Fork Blacklick Accord Implementation Panel's recommendation is approval seven to zero. If there are no questions or comments regarding this ordinance, I would first like to amend to emergency. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Amended. Thank you. And I would now like to move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2409-2020 to grant a variance and provisions of sections 3332.039-R4, residential district, 3332.21, building lines, 3332.25, maximum side yards required, and 3332.27, rear yard of the Columbus City Codes were properly located at 610 Neal Avenue. To permit, dance, to permit a dance studio, assembly, and general office uses, and to conform existing reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Cindy Lee Parker, care of attorney Craig Moncrief. The proposed use is a mixed use building. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Victorian Village Commission's recommendation is approval five to zero. 
If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I first move to waive second reading. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Waived. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. So the first ordinance, this, this variance is 2436-2020, to, I'm sorry, this ordinance, to grant a variance from, from the provisions of sections 3332.039-R1 residential district and 3332.28-A private garage of the Columbus City Codes for property located at 6164 Rose Lawn Avenue and to permit a private garage on a residential lot not occupied with a dwelling in the R1 residential district for a two-year period. The applicant is CBA Professionals, LLC, care of Aubrey Flynn agent. The proposed use is a residential private garage. The C department's recommendation is approval and the Far East Air Commission's recommendation is approval. And it was unanimous. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I first move to waive second reading. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Waived. Thank you. And now I move for passage. Second. Please call the row. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And the final ordinance in zoning this evening is 1954-2020. It is to rezone 3101 Agler Road. 17.82 acres located on the south side of Agler Road between Sunbury Road and North Cassie Avenue from R Rural District, R1 Residential District to C3, C3 Commercial Commercial District and the LC5 Limited Commercial District and P1 Private Parking District 2 LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is Agler Joint Venture LLC, care of attorney Michael Shannon. The proposed use is a warehouse distribution and off office use. The C Department's recommendation is disapproval, and the Northeast Air Commission's recommendation was a disapproval or for. Um, I would um, first like to ask for a um, staff presentation, and I think that will come to Kelsey tonight. It's actually going to be me tonight. Tim? Is it Tim? Tim, great. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, good evening. The 17.82 acre site consists of seven undeveloped parcels in the R Rural R1 residential. C3 commercial, LC5 limited commercial, and P1 private parking districts. The applicant requests the LM limited manufacturing district to permit warehouse distribution and office uses at this location. The limitation text establishes appropriate use restrictions and supplemental development standards that address building and parking setbacks, traffic access, buffering and landscaping, and open space. Additionally, the limitation text contains commitments to develop the site in accordance with the submitted site plan, building elevations, and the landscape plan. The site is within the planning boundaries of the Northeast Area Plan, which recommends mixed-use neighborhood center land uses and the Agler cassidy mixed-use center at this location. Planning Division views the proposed use as being potentially supportable with revisions to the site design and that improves how the corner is addressed. Staff has requested that the applicant receive additional input from the Northeast Area Co Commission on the proposed site design to further evaluate before making a determination, as the area plan was developed jointly with the Commission. Since the Northeast Area Commission has not been meeting regularly during the COVID-19 pandemic, staff is unable to recommend approval until further information is provided by the Commission and the applicant, and therefore our City Department's recommendation is for disapproval at this time. 
Thank you, Tim. And I would now like to, does anyone have any questions for Tim? I, uh, Council um, Member Tyson, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Tim, I'm wondering if you could just clarify a little bit for um, just the process. Um, you indicated that um, staff's approval cannot change until the, the area commission was able to, to gather it once again. Um, our, our planning division staff, they, they, would, they wanted additional uh, input from the Northeast Area Commission regarding uh, design of the site. Uh, and they have not been able to receive that as of now. Um, and so we haven't been able to uh, change their position from disapproval at this time. Customer favor, I probably can um, kind of somewhat respond to this. I'll respond to it all, but um, because we certainly have had conversations with the uh, chair as well as the zoning, the chair of the commission and the zoning chair. So if we could, I don't know if you want to ask him any other questions, but I think as we go through it and have the applicant share his thoughts, and then I will be able to probably provide additional information. Customer favor. Yes, ma'am. That's that's fine. I apologize. I I was not on my head. Yes, but yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't see you. Oh, that's I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So I'm going to. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask um, Attorney Michael Shannon to give a presentation now. Um, we've been working. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, we've been working on the subject site uh, since the first week of March of this year for about eight months. Uh, unfortunately, as soon as we uh, had our initial meeting, concept meeting with the Area Commission, the pandemic hit, and subsequently we were not uh, able to meet with the Area Commission again until July. During that interim, um, the uh, city staff recommended approval with the exception of the planning division in the uh, development department. And their recommendation of approval was conditioned on uh, get in, getting approval of the Northeast Area Commission because it was a plan amendment. But similarly, when we went to the Development Commission in June and then July, the Area Commission had been unable uh, to conduct meetings. So we got a unanimous approval of the Development Commission, but out of deference to the Area Commission, uh, they as well made a condition on approval by the Area Commission. Uh, despite uh, probably uh, six to eight uh, separate meetings uh, with the Area Commission between July uh, and tonight, uh, I was unable to get uh, a majority consensus. Um, the most recent vote was a four to four tie. Um, uh, subsequent to that, um, Chair Tyson uh, was able to get involved uh, to help uh, break the deadlock. And um, I'd like to point out that uh, there's um, a lot of benefits of this zoning, but there were some neighborhood concerns that we could not address within the confines of the zoning, and we had to do a good neighbor agreement. The subject site uh, would facilitate a prospect to locate here uh, that would create 175 jobs, uh, uh, annual payroll of $10.5 million. Uh, I don't think there was any dispute about the land use, but there was concerns about uh, some off-site issues about some uh, Little League football players uh, and children uh, that actually played almost 2,000 feet north of our site, north of Agler and Cassidy. And those required off-site commitments that we just couldn't put in a zoning text. Uh, but with the advice and counsel of uh, Zoning Chair Tyson, we were able to reduce them to a good neighbor agreement, uh, which subsequently uh, the co-chair of the Area Commission and the Zoning Chair uh, found acceptable. And to highlight the major points of that very briefly uh, was that we agreed uh, to a financial commitment uh, for the uh, children's uh, Little League uh, that is playing north of Cassidy Elementary on the opposite side of the street from us, again, about 2,000 feet north. Um, there was concern that there's a crosswalk there and that uh, potentially we could have semi-truck traffic. 
So we approached it from a couple different aspects. Uh, we are going to make a donation uh, to the appropriate nonprofit that uh, runs the uh, Little League, um, and we're going to facilitate whatever it takes, whether it be fencing or uh, additional things to provide for spectator and player uh, safety. We're going to work uh, with the Area Commission and have scheduled meetings on site. We've also gone the extra mile and uh, limited um, all of our semi-truck traffic on our site. We'll not be able to go north of Agler Road to where the crosswalk in question is, again, 2,000 feet north of our site. Uh, we reduced this to writing in our Good Neighbor Agreement um, at Council's urging and uh, at the Area Commission's urging. We also included provisions uh, to ensure that we'll have a diverse workforce here. We've agreed to partner with nonprofits in the area, including uh, Impact, as well as uh, some other uh, uh, workforce training uh, nonprofits uh, to help advocate for diversity for our, our workforce. Uh, we're also going to have uh, job sites, uh, job fairs on site. Um, and this, uh, in addition to the 175 jobs and a $10.5 million payroll, uh, we're also given 4.5 acres of parkland. And there are no sidewalks at Agler and Cassidy. And we are uh, constructing 10-foot uh, bike paths on the frontages of both Agler Road and Cassidy. Uh, in addition to the road improvements, uh, the benefit to the community is that we are extending a utility line uh, off-site about 600 feet that will activate additional property for development in this area of town. Um, and we're also uh, cleaning up some environmental problems from a gas station that was previously on the site. So technically, um, we did receive a disapproval because a 4-4 vote um, is a technically a no. And then that triggered, triggered the positive recommendations uh, to defaulting to a no. But the fact of the matter is the Development Commission did support the land use uh, unanimously. All staff supported it with the exception of planning, who uh, I understand felt duty bound to wait to see what the Area Commission did. Uh, but with the help of the leadership of uh, Zoning Chair Tyson, we now have consensus uh, with the Area Commission, as is evidenced by the uh, executed Good Neighbor Agreement that are provided to all council aides um, as well as to city staff. So for those reasons, we'd respectfully request uh, your approval, and I'd be happy to address any specific questions. Uh, again, thank you, um, Attorney Shannon. Are there any questions for um, Attorney Shannon? Right. Um, seeing none, I, I just want to share, um, Michael, Attorney Shannon certainly did share um, this the Good Neighbor Agreement. And I um, just want to share with my colleagues that I have driven over past this location probably three or four times. I've had, um, let's see, I've talked to both the zoning, the, the, zone, the chair of the commission, Mr. Rayford, um, twice. I've talked to um, the zoning chair, Ms. Porter, twice. And their, cons well, Mr. Mr. Rayford's concern was certainly about the safety of the children. So this is on the corner of Adler and Cassidy. And, um, you know, further, well, if you're on Cassie, further north on Cassie, it happens to be Cassie Elementary School and our recreation and parks um, facility. And so what we have, um, so it is, it's close to this project and they just, and the community just does not want trucks going west, going north on Cassidy. And so um, in this agreement, the, um, the, car, the owner of this property, Mr. Brock Bionde, they committed that they would um, make sure that they're having signage um, that would state that you have to come out of their facility on Cassidy, you have to make a right turn. And if, um, so you would not be driving, you would not be driving down Cassidy, or you would either go straight down Adler, but you would not be turning and going north on Cassidy. They also are putting it into the lease for whoever is, um, um, who will be the, the, or the company that may be leasing this property. But also, they, so that was a, really the safety was the concern of of um, Chair Rayford. Of course, you can never you can never um, 
guarantee safety, but you can certainly do everything you can to make sure the trucks are not going in that direction, at least from this company. And they have agreed to that. And even how you have to turn in and out of the property will designate that they can't go but a certain way. So that was important in this. What was important for Miss uh, for uh, Chair Zoning Chair Porter was that the concern of making sure that jobs were available in their community, especially in terms of Black and Brown individuals. And so, based upon that, they have agreed to work with Impact, the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio, um, and they will to be able to hire uh, people of color to be able to have jobs. And the uh, the air, so to have jobs in this community, and and besides all the other um, commitments to the new good neighbor agreement that that attorney Shannon stated, I, I think that uh, it would be in it would be to the the advantage of this company to be a really good neighbor in this community, and they have committed um, in writing to doing that. Also, they committed to participating in quarterly meetings um, with the Area Commission to address any ongoing concerns. And if not only quarterly, if there happens to be any issues outside of those quarterly meetings, they can he, the owner of this property, has committed to providing them, Miss um, Porter and others, with his phone number if any concerns were to happen during this. Um, at this location. I do believe next week there may be um, some, some legislation and the um, from the economic development that will um, that is that will go along with this the zoning should it pass tonight and I will make those have similar comments ensuring that this good neighbor agreement is going to be um, that this commitment is fulfilled by the potential uh, company that may go into this building. Are there any questions regarding um, this zoning? Council Member Tyson? Yes, Council Member okay. Well, first let me say thank you for uh, your leadership in this space. Uh, I personally have received a lot of uh, emails about this specific project. So uh, it, it, it appears as though there has been a, a lot of work that has gone in uh, to getting us to this point today. So I guess my question is just more of a technical one, just around um, if the commission was able to meet one more time, uh, do you believe that we would have been able to get over the hump um, and that would therefore change the decision of the planning uh, um, committee or planning department, excuse me? No, I don't know. I, I tell you, so, the so this so uh, attorney uh Shannon. I think I could address yeah, I, I, so I just I, I will share this with you. I do believe that you know the way this was approved was since the area so if the area commission had met one more time, would this have changed? I'm not sure because the issues that that the Air Commission is concerned about was one about have you know jobs in their community, which isn't really a zoning issue. So we so we've worked out this work, and then the other was a safety issue, not wanting a truck to go uh, north on Cassidy, and so I. <clears throat> When you are, um, which we are supposed to hear as counselor, when you're hearing these types of concerns that may not be a land use concern, I don't know. It would only mean if you definitely had like one more person that was there at the meeting that may have voted yes, because those concerns are not normally zoning concerns. They're things that we listen to, but it has not, doesn't have anything to do with the land use. So I, to be honest, I'm not sure if that if a third time of going back would change it. The last vote was a four to four vote. I believe that having this good neighbor agreement is um, is an important document for to move this forward. I believe that the Department of 
this is not planning, but certainly there isn't anyone even here that's on this call from the Department of, from the Area Commission to oppose this. So, I mean, I may be a long way of answering it, but I, but as it, as the zoning chair, so we don't just look at land use, we look at the issues the community has, as you well know. And so the, once I started having meetings, I realized that their issues were things that I just mentioned and tried my best to put a work with them to put a good neighbor agreement to address those concerns. That's a long way, a, a, a long way out of answering the question. Um, no, that, that, I, I can, um, I understand your, your response. Um, I guess to attorney Shannon, uh, what is going to be the recourse if, if and when um, whoever is going to be the, um, whoever's going to lease the property? Um, first of all, is there an identified uh, entity that's going to lease the property? And then secondly, what's going to be the recourse for the community if, um, they start to see um, whoever that entity is not um, adhering to the agreement. Okay, um, the uh, the prospect is, is confidential. It's a Fortune 100 company that would uh, be providing a, a, a 175 jobs to the Northeast Area Commission. Uh, the recourse would be that um, we would put this in a restrictive covenant in our lease uh, and um, if they would uh, go north of Agra Road uh, into the area where the rec center is uh, and the school is, uh, it would be a violation of their lease. Uh, we would have civil recourse. Also, because of the very nature of this business, their trucks uh, are, are not semi-trucks, they're, um, they're panel trucks, and they would be very easily identifiable uh, by their logo so that uh, any potential uh, trucks that would uh, violate this agreement, it would be visible by casual observation uh, by residents in the area commission. And uh, that's why we've, our principals have given them uh, their mobile phone numbers and uh, have agreed to go to meetings on a regular basis to, uh, to police this. So uh, I think the other important thing is, is that since the time that, that staff report um, was written that uh, Tim read, um, you know, that was written many months ago. Um, and since that time, the uh, development department has become engaged with this Fortune 100 prospect. As Council uh, Chair Tyson said, uh, next week there would be uh, some incentive legislation involved with a project of that magnitude, and it could be reinforced uh, there as well. But again, uh, Council Person Favor, um, it's um, when you get into what is known as an off-site commitment, uh, it is inappropriate to put it in your zoning text, not to be uh, a legal beagle, uh, but really the best way to address it is the good neighbor agreement. I do know that there have been some good neighbor agreements that have been flaunted, that those who sign them uh, don't follow through. Um, a lot of those, uh, there's some in this area where um, people promise not to have commercial traffic go through a residential neighborhood and it continued to happen. Uh, in those cases, that would be a code violation. In our case, there's already 4,000 uh, trips a day going through this intersection. And we reached out to the Division of Traffic Engineering, and they, for good reason, couldn't regulate the truck traffic because it's already there. We were in a unique position that we could self-impose this restriction and make our trucks do what all the other trucks don't have to do, and that is go south on Cassidy to 670 or go uh, west on Angler to Stelzer. So the good neighbor agreement puts teeth into what is otherwise an off-site agreement that we staff wouldn't normally accept in a limitation text, um, but it makes it enforceable. Um, we actually executed it and notarized it, um, and copies have been disseminated to the commission um, development department. And I should point out neighborhood services, um, the director and particularly a young lady named Delina Scales has been extremely helpful in negotiating this agreement. So there is a good faith effort here to be a good neighbor and the prospect for the Northeast Area Commission in terms of uh, the actual job growth uh, and the property values that are gonna increase and the safety that's gonna increase because of the pedestrian uh, paths that we're putting at Agler and Cassidy. There's no, there's no sidewalks there for these kids right now. Um, and again, uh, the significant infrastructure that we're providing 
will allow um, other vacant fields in the area to be developed. So we think we're setting a standard that's going to be tough for others to follow, and we think uh, that's what Chair Tyson wanted. I know that uh, Chair Porter um, is very pleased with the agreement, um, and uh, again, the co-chair did sign off on it. So it's a good question, Councilperson Favor, but uh, that's the only way I can answer it with all due respect. And I would also like to add something just so um, just to add to this conversation that um, I certainly had extensive conversations with everyone. And I th do believe that next week, if this uh, if this agreement moves forward and certainly uh, Director Stevens is aware of it. But if this moves forward, as Michael said, it would be an identifiable uh, truck. Is not going to be which before we didn't know who would possibly be there. So you could have possibly have some some semi trucks. This will not be the case here. That would be a rarity because of what this business happens to be. And it would also, as you said, be identifiable that there were any concerns. And based upon this company, it would not be in their best interest to not continue to do um, to follow the steps of this good neighbor agreement. But and and so. Next week, we will also have these same comments because of if we're giving um, an incentive to this company that you know, to ensure that they clearly, and I think they understand the diversity. Uh, I know what the salaries would possibly be, which will be very helpful. Mrs. Porter was really um, concerned about making sure that people would be able to enhance their uh, quality of life by having an opportunity for these jobs and before these jobs start would we'll be working with we would be well they're making a commitment to work in the community to work with like an impact or other nonprofits to be able to get employees prepared so when these jobs begin that they would be able to to come there and have an opportunity to get a job um, with this company. Are there any other questions from my colleagues? Councilmember Tyson, did you just state that um, members of the community or any interested individuals would have the opportunity to, to receive some level of, of training, not training, but uh, something so they would be some type of skills uh, based training that would prepare them for a possible opportunity? Okay. Yes. That's what we know. You know, that was part of the negotiation that, you know, that I mean, this this is a community um, that certainly is predominantly an African-American community. And so um, with the concerns that we that I heard, uh, it was important that and it's in here, it's all in this good neighbor agreement. It was important and it's written in here that um, I'm going to read it the more specifically this this AG, AJV agrees to work with impact in the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio in an effort to advocate for diversity and nearby uh, residential consideration and interviewing and hiring process with the tenants. And AJ, AJV will also encourage their tenants to do so. Yeah, and that, that fact is not lost on me at all, which is the reason why I was asking about the the, the neighbor, the good neighbor agreement, having had worked on many in the past, I think it's important for us to convey uh, to the best of our ability, uh, some level of confidence uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the document um, so that the community doesn't feel as though their concerns have not been heard. So uh, once again, I, I appreciate the work uh, that you and your team has done to get us to this point. Thank you. And the last comment I'll make, and I've always said this to attorneys that or agents that work on zonings, if you if you, you know, are signing into a good neighbor agreement, now your client may not necessarily come back, but you are going to come back. And if you can't make sure, and if you don't make sure your clients meet these good neighbor agreements, the very next time you come in for a good neighbor agreement, you know, we may not be as um, accommodating to try to move it forward in terms because you cannot make sure that you can be um, that you're going to make sure that you are meeting the needs of the other of the requirements of any other good neighbor agreement. So understood. <laughs> 
right. by council members as well. We, thank you, Madam Chair, for that, that lesson. <laughs> right. You'll be back. And so, okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. Well, again, we'll have an opportunity to make these comments to the next week also. And I think uh, Director Stevens knows how we feel about this. So uh, if there are no other questions or comments, then I would first move to waive second reading. Second. And I also now- uh, would, Sorry, please call sorry, the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Waive. And I will um, amend as submitted to the clerk. Second. Um, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Amended. Thank you. And before I pass it, I do want to again say thank you to uh, Zoning Chair uh, Porter, as well as the Chair uh, Mr. Rayford for certainly sharing their thoughts and comments about this uh, legislate this ordinance. And so with that, and I appreciate their work on this. And with that, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, and that's all I have for this, for this zoning this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Seeing no further business coming for the zoning committee, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Have a good evening, everyone.